Human history is full of conflicts, battles between countries, political differences, religion, and even sports. There is something in us that leads us to fight with those we consider different, filling us with discrimination and often with violence. But where does this behavior come from? An experiment was carried out with a group of children, an experiment that in today's society would be impossible to realize, given that it is considered unethical. Today, we're going to take a look at the robber's cave experiment. This experiment was carried out in 1954 by Musafer Sharif and Carolyn Sharif. Musafer Sharif is considered by many the father of social psychology. This experiment sought to measure the origin of prejudice between social groups. It consisted of transporting 22 children to Robbers Cave State Park. The 22 children came from similar social classes, shared the same religious beliefs, were of the same color and age. The children were divided into two groups. Each group was transported in different buses and placed in separate living quarters. The idea behind this was that each group would be oblivious to the existence of the other, and then submit them to different activities. The first phase of the experiment was to create bonds between the children. In the first days, they were given several tasks to perform together as well as recreational activities such as swimming. That way, the children from each group would become friends. They were also asked to nickname their groups. One group named themselves the Rattlers, and the other one the Eagles. They were also tasked to create a flag to represent their groups. Everything was happiness and fun for the children, until the most important part of the experiment began. They were informed that there was another group, and that they would compete against each other. Different competitions would be held, and the winning group would win prizes and trophies, while the losing group would win nothing. They would compete in baseball, tug-of-war, and others. Hostility began to develop between the two groups. The winning group would pick up an arrogant attitude, and the losing group would insult or even burn the winner's flags. Little by little, the environment would grow more hostile. Afterwards, both groups were given questionnaires asking their opinions on the rival group and what their thoughts were about their own group. Both groups' responses were similar. The belonging members would describe their group with positivity and would describe the rival group with negativity. The hostility between the groups reached a boiling point in which the children ended up fighting each other. At that time, it was decided to move to the next phase of the experiment, to try and integrate members of both groups. Doing this would not be easy, so those in charge of the experiment decided that rather than forcing friendship between the groups, they put them in different situations where they would have to work together to get ahead. For example, they were taken to a location where they were informed that there was a shortage of water and that they had to work together in order to resupply the drinking water, as well as to make other decisions in unison. Little by little, both groups began to interact and work together until they became friends. Now, what could we have learned from this experiment? In the first phase, we could believe that by creating flags and names to define them was something productive, but in actuality, Creating different identities separated the groups. This can encourage discrimination to those outside of the group. Even though the children were the same age, race, shared the same beliefs, and were in the same park, creating different names and flags for their groups led them to discriminate, something we see too often in our society. We live on the same planet but invisible lines of ideology and beliefs separates us. One of the children said that he felt a sense of belonging to his flag, that he should defend his territory and represent his group. 
But is that really logical? Just as these psychologists manipulated the children into discriminating and fight each other, leaders of the world make their citizens fight in the name of a flag or a piece of land, for which it has only divided us even more. Even fans of different sports or teams have been capable of hurting the fans of rival teams just for not sharing their same fanatism. Should we feel proud of the flags or nationalities that separates us from the rest of humanity, leading us to discriminate and fight in the name of a political interest that take advantage of our pride? Tragedies have united nations into cooperating and shake hands, but these unions aren't permanent. Each country preserves its own interest. More than a simple experiment with kids, this experiment showed how easy it is to manipulate people from an early age to be hostile to those who are different. So think twice when you feel the desire to humiliate others just because the country where you were born or the flag you represent is not the same as theirs. Tell me what you think about this experiment. Why do you think it is so easy for some people to discriminate against others based only on their place of origin? Just like the children from this experiment, you also can be manipulated by an entity who wishes to take advantage of your belongingness. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, assume nothing and question everything.